Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back. I have some assistants with me today. That's Shelby. For those of you who haven't met her, Shelby just lives in my room. This is Shelby. Big news. There's a shop now called Tom, just like the community. And in fact, now there is a, a logo in the upper left corner. If you are in a web browser and you are in the Tom community, there's a logo for shop that you can just click and you go straight to the shop. It has a bunch of hoodies. It has zippered black hoodies like this one as well, where the designs are on the back. And of course, the shirt that I'm wearing is the first print that I got from the shop. And I am so happy with it, you guys. The colors came out amazing. And this is a super, super detailed drawing. You all know it. I was a little concerned about putting stuff with this much detail on, but I am 100% satisfied with how the print came out. So cool. And it's pretty small too, like on, on this shirt and size small, it came out beautifully. And the hoodie dress that I got, which I was going to wear, but it's really hot. So <laughs> I took it off. I printed a line drawing on it. Like the, my tiny adult coloring design with the, oh, came out so beautifully. And printing on hoodies is tough. Love the shop. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you guys for all the suggestions. I am also pleasantly surprised to see how dark and romantic everyone is in the community. One of the perks of being a community member is that you guys get to tell me what to put on my merch. I can't guarantee that everything will work because some designs just don't work in print. But I am taking all of your suggestions and so far all of the suggestions are like my favorite works of art. All right, looks like we have a bunch of people here with us already. Let's get started. You guys voted last week live on doing this page together. This page is, of course, a gift page for every patron on every tier at this point. So if you're watching this on YouTube as a short video, uh, if you're a patron, you have this page as a gift. So go grab it and, uh, and play with it. Today, I will be showing how to do silver blonde hair. And uh, many of you will be pleased that we will actually be starting with crack. Crack, of course, is what we lovingly call white charcoal here in the community. Because Khaleesi has blonde hair, starting with white charcoal is a logical choice. As you will discover in the Udemy course on coloring hair, not all blonde hair will start with white charcoal. In fact, the very first coloring that I offer in the course doesn't start with white charcoal. But this one, Khaleesi's hair, it's not only extremely light in pigment, I'm also working from a reference image from a still frame from a movie uh, where her hair is lit kind of dramatically. And the front of it, you have direct sunlight on the hair, so it's a really white. It's not even blonde. It's just like silvery white, like silk. And then the back of the hair will be a little bit darker, quite a bit darker actually, because it will be in shadow. White charcoal is of course used as a primer in this case. I am priming the areas that will be ultimately the lightest and the areas where I want to add light colors that are so light, um, like this cream that I'll be working with later. It's actually lighter than the color of my paper. So for very light colors like this, I do need to prime the page if I'm working on tan toned paper or gray toned paper so that the saturation and the clarity of this light color comes out perfectly. Ah, first color, French gray. Now that the priming is done, once again, not all of the priming, just the areas that are sunlit, I am starting the shadow side. So my first two steps are the light and the shadow. And since it's going to be silvery blonde hair, French gray to me is an obvious choice. But again, there's a lot of leeway here. It's not a formula. You guys know that I like to teach you to make your own decisions and to go with your own gut feeling. Not all of you are working on gray paper. Some of you mentioned that you don't have gray paper, that you have tan and white. Some of you just don't like gray paper. Some of you, Tiffany, like to work on white and do an amazing job doing so. Some of you have pink paper and blue paper, and it's wonderful. This design will work on any color paper. 
Once again, I'm working with Prismacolors because I love Prismacolors for hair. It's just such a personal preference that's stuck with me at this point. If I'm doing hair, I automatically go to Prismacolors, even if I'm doing the rest of the page in Black Widows. Here, as I'm adjusting these shadows and I'm applying the darker part of the hair, the whole shape of the head is suddenly materializing right in front of my eyes. All right, next color, Ginger Root. Ginger Root is one of the light colors that I was talking about. Notice I'm applying it to gray paper directly here, and there's barely any difference. There's a difference in color, but not in darkness. It's literally the same darkness as the paper. Ginger Root here is used as a blender pencil. It's a pencil that I choose to use to blend my two previous colors together. So my two previous colors were white and gray, and now I'm using a pencil that's exactly the tone of my paper to blend them. And look how beautiful that's coming out. You may not have ginger root, but you probably have some kind of a cream or um, something in this mustard family. In the Black Widow um, sets, the skin tones have amazing colors that would work here. Um, leather, olive green, all of those, that whole family of pencils would work absolutely beautiful here. Dark Umber. This one I was stuck on. I got to this point and I'm like, I need a dark brown. And I literally went through my entire collection of everything that I have on my desk to work with right now. And I tried every single dark brown pencil that I have. I had this very clear vision in my mind of how her hair will turn out. And I want, I want the dark side of her hair to be reminiscent of like a dark stormy day. You know, she's a very uh, complicated character and, and very, uh, I would say almost bipolar. You know, she has, she has this innocent girly side to her and protect the people and save everyone. And then she has the let's murder everyone and burn cities to the ground monster side to her. So I wanted that in the coloring as well. I want an extremely light side and I want like this moody, stormy weather dark side. Uh, she's bipolar, right? <laughs> right? She's like, I love everyone. I'm going to save all this like murder everyone with fire. Like there's nothing in between with this woman. <laughs> Espresso, uh huh, yeah, espresso would be great here. Absolutely, excellent choice. Ah, a different kind of gray, seventy percent warm gray. Notice that it's the same darkness as my brown. So that was the key to picking this color. It's not about it being warm or about it being cool or about it being anything else, Prisma color or whatever. So here, it's not about getting the right color. It's about getting enough variation in color that the hair is starting to look natural. So I can't stress this enough. Layers, 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 all the way. If you look at your coloring and you assess it and you are thinking something's missing, I'm still not doing it right, it still looks a little flat, this is what you're missing. Not this particular color, not this particular choice, but the amount of colors that you are adding. They can be very close to each other, but it makes a difference. Black. Look, look at the selection. Look at my test strip here. If you just saw that and not the coloring that I'm working on, you probably wouldn't guess that I'm working on blonde hair. Most of this is really dark. So that's another thing to keep in mind when you're working on hair color. It's not about picking the color that matches the color of the hair. You know, we talked about pre-selecting your tools before you start your coloring. And what will happen, what does happen quite a bit is when people take that advice, they pre-select colors that they think will be the right ones for the job because I said blonde hair. What goes into blonde hair? A little bit of gray, maybe some lilac, a lot of yellow, a lot of cream, some ginger root, some white, and that's it. And that's all people will set aside or they may even just pick that one perfect color that matches the blonde sample that they like from the Prismacolor box and go with that. And that's not how coloring works. You're not coloring a hair sample that's like stuck to the page for people to choose their hair color. You're coloring a head of hair that exists in space. There is something behind her. There's something in front of her. She exists in the world. Uh, did you see the Starbucks coffee cup? Yes, I did. I saw the Starbucks coffee cup. They got rid of it. 
<laughs> they accidentally shot an episode where somebody, one of the actors, left the Starbucks coffee cup on the table. That was hilarious. So, black. I'm adding black over the darkest part of the hair. And here I'm adding it mostly to build up the shade of the gray. So black is optional here. I like to add it because I felt like there needs to be even more drama. You know, I'm really into this whole dark side, light side of her hair. So I'm adding the black to enhance the grays that I have. It's more moody. Cream. Cream I'm adding here in lieu of yellow. I really wanted... I want to make sure that this doesn't come across as a black and white coloring, that there's still pigment here. So there, there has to be a little bit of that yellowish natural blonde tone to her color, to her hair, but I didn't want to go with yellow. And maybe in your coloring, yellow will look fine. It's not like yellow is wrong. It's just, it's not what I want. Look how tiny my white got. After this video, it got even tinier. It's this big now. And it can still get smaller and will get smaller. Mark says, with Prisma pencils, I see you don't use Q-tips. Why not? Good question. Uh, with Prisma colors, I rarely use Q-tips because I use my blender pencils quite a bit. The lighter pencils on top of darker pencils act as a Q-tip on their own. And they blend a little bit differently than than Black Widow pencils. So for Widows, I tend to use Q-tips because I'm adding darker colors on top of lighter ones. So again, skin tones is an excellent example. I could do a peach color on as a base for my, for my skin, and then I'm adding uh, like a chestnut brown to the side for the shadow, and then I would use a Q-tip to blend it all together so that the, the brown doesn't look sketchy. Here, I don't have that problem because I'm literally adding white over the color. This white right now is a blender pencil. It doesn't need to be blended. But the other reason is, it's not that I never blend Prismacolor pencils. Sometimes it happens. Another factor here is the subject matter itself. I'm working with hair. So I'm working with the direction of the hair. My strokes are actually following the lines of the strands of the hair. So there's nothing too bland. I want it to be liney and strandy. Like I trail off every strand, but I don't need that, that smooth sumato effect that I get on the skin tones. So two reasons. Prismacolor texture and how light colors work over dark colors, especially the blender pencils, and the subject matter. Because it's hair, same thing would work with fur and feathers. I wouldn't use Q-tips on fur and feathers and hair, even if I worked with Black Widow pencils. Um, I would just go, I would use my strokes to my advantage to create the texture. Uh, this is so freaking awesome, says Mark. Thank you. I'm watching this on my 55-inch TV. Holy cow, Mark. Wow, I hope my hair looks good. <laughs> Ah, uh, I really like to use polychromos on hair and backgrounds. Okay, please tell us more about why. Um, is it because you like the blending? Do they also, I'm not, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with polychromos. I have some of them in my collection, uh, but I don't specifically have a habit for doing like a whole coloring in polychromos. So I'm, I am by far not an expert on them as I am with Prismacolors and Black Widows. Oh, I have an electric sharpener now. It's over there. It's behind the teacup. I have an electric sharpener that my other mother gave to me as a gift. And it is so cool, you guys. I haven't had one in decades. Oh, hello. You want to come here and say hello? This is Shelby. And there's Foxtail down there. You see the black tail? That's not attached to the yellow dog. That's a different dog. Okay, I'm back. So electric sharp oh hi shelby <laughs> everyone's saying hello to shelby isn't she a sweetheart she just she lives in that little hobo bed that she made down there in my room she has the whole house to herself she lives she lives over there uh is the sharpener very loud um let me show you i'll put my mic next to it how loud was that like it's not crazy loud no it's just like and that's it since I'm showing you stuff, I'll make myself bigger. So this is the one that came with the electric sharpener. It came with a little baby that you can use by hand. Um, but this is the one that I use um, for white charcoal for crack. 
In fact, I use it only for it so that I can keep my, my shavings in there and use that as pigment as well. All right. Well, it looks like we're out of time. This was fun. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the show and will practice the same effect on your own. Thank you so much for everything, Master Jedi. You're most welcome, Master Mark. You're most welcome. Thank you guys for an amazing pack meeting. Oh, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you're not a member of the pack, if you are a new fan, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you don't already. And join me on Patreon so that you too can be a member of the pack and have these amazing gatherings with me. The full length two hour lessons happen every other month. So, on that note, goodbye and farewell, and have a wonderful day or evening or night or wherever you are in the world. Bye.